Hey guys, we are back with more San Jose Sharks franchise mode, and uh, we are here on December 1st, and let's take a look at the lines here really quick, because I want to show you guys something that I noticed in the last episode after recording. Samuel Montebo. <laughs> He's been solid for us for a while, but not this year. 866 save percentage, that is absolutely unacceptable. Atrocious. So we're going to, I think we're going to have to trade him here. He's, again, he's been solid uh, all the years he's been with us, except for this year. 866, that's really not good at all, Montebo. So we're going to be trading you here in uh, in one moment. And I do have a trade in mind, and it should work. <laughs> so we're going to go to Dallas here. As uh, they have... A goaltender who I'm particularly interested in. They have a plethora of young starter and elite goaltenders. But the one I'm interested in is Kenny Hatcher. 23 years of age. He's cheap. $1.5 million. But look at that save percentage over nine games. 944. That's on par <laughs> with Freddie Mahler. If, of course, he played as many games as Freddie Mahler. But uh, that is very, very nice for a backup. So we're going to be putting Montebo on there. Sorry, Montebo, you're just not getting it done this year for me, buddy. And we are also going to include a defenseman because Dallas needs some defensemen, it looks like. So we're going to give them Donald. And uh, actually, I'll just show you their defense, their young defenseman here. They don't have any one more than a top four potential. So we'll give them a, we'll give them a low elite there in Donald. That should get it done for them. Proposed trade. Really? Quite far okay. Uh Jesus. Apparently I'm off of my trade value negotiations lately. Uh let's also give them my toe. Will that work out for you? Proposed trade. There we go. Trade accepted. Okay, so we have a solid backup now in Mr. Kenny Hatcher, who once again, as I mentioned, has a very Solid save percentage, 944 in nine games played, and then 943 for Freddie Mahler. So we have a very, very nasty goaltending tandem, if I do say so myself. So other than that, we're not changing a thing about this team, because I know we were a little bit weak on faceoffs, especially for, for the fourth line, and then the second line was all minuses. But you know what? We're winning right now, so I really I don't want to mess with anything, you know, because every other line besides the second line is going... And even the second line is scoring. It's just they're letting in a few too many goals. But I'll let them figure that out for themselves in the simulation. Hopefully that, uh, hopefully we can, you know, keep the good times rolling here. And we'll go one month in the simulation. So, Florida, that is going to be a 4-1 to loss. That is unfortunate. But, of course, we followed up with a 2-1 to win and then a 3-2 to win. So, we're, we're we're on a good track here. And uh, we actually, we're, we're facing Dallas now. So, hopefully... Uh, Montebo's in net. <laughs> Let's see. Two to one overtime win. Okay, so Montebo probably was not in net there based on his recent performances for the Dallas Stars. And uh, a lot of close games here. Don't know exactly what to make of this team yet. There's our first three game losing streak, I believe, of the season. But uh, we followed up with two wins and an overtime loss against an Eastern Conference team. So we got points there and a shootout win as well against Minnesota. So, yeah, I mean, we're getting points in a lot of these games here. So, I mean, there's really nothing to change <laughs> if if it's uh, if it was up to me. You know, we're 23-10-5. Again, there's no reason to change anything at this point. The only change I made was the backup goaltender, and that was because... Montebo was really not doing well at all. And uh, let's take a look at the goaltender stats just to make sure that Mahler and Hatcher have been keeping up. Yeah, they've been keeping up a pretty good pace. 938 for both of them. So I cannot complain. Goaltending is just fine. Cannot blame goaltending this season unless we have a huge drop off at the end of the season. That would not be good. Let's go another month and uh, let's see what happens. So, yeah, we'll go up to February 1st. This season is actually kind of flying by pretty quickly here. <laughs> I guess that's uh, that's what happens when you are having some success. But uh, there is 
Another three-game losing streak, unfortunately. Uh, we have a bye week here after Winnipeg. There you go. Answered it up pretty nicely with a 3 nothing victory. Let's hope we can continue that against Arizona. No, we cannot. 3-2 to two lost. So we're starting to get a little bit more inconsistent now, which is... Uh, we might have to take a look at that and see what's struggling, what's not. 4-1 to one lost. Yikes. Uh, if we lose one or two more, then I'm stopping it. All right, there's two wins. Uh, that's good. There you go. There you go. So we're... I, I, I don't know what to make of this team exactly because... We started off the season so well. Now we're... We appear to be going in streaks. So... Uh, oh, this is quite the trade. Let's see. Uh, round four, round five, and a round six. And Josh Jacobs for a third, Timmons, and a sixth. No, that, that is a very... as a pointless trade for me to make to make right now. I'll uh, decline that. Uh, let's see. So we still sit second in our division. But the unfortunate thing is... That it appears teams like Vegas and Vancouver are starting to catch up to the pack here. So uh, we definitely can't go on too many more of those slides. So let's take a look at uh, what's going on here. Koliakovo appears to have dried up a little bit. He's only uh, at 39 points, 49 games in. Richie is th at 34. Molson, 32. That was definitely a good pickup. Darren McLeod with 31. Wish he would do a little bit more. Clayton Keller with 28, really not earning his $9.1 million here. You better do a lot in the playoffs, son. Uh, Ricard Raquel with 27. McAvoy with 24, he picked it up. Branston with 21 on the third line, very nice. Uh, Hannafin with 20. Dowdy with 19. Wiseman with 15, so we're getting a lot of depth scoring. Couturier with 14. Ovechkin with 12, 7 goals. Uh, Nichushkin with 10. Vernarski with 10. Um, McCarron with six, Plus with five, Barahowski with four. Let's see who's a minus. So it's at, at this point, it's just Raquel and Brandstrom. So the second line's been doing better in terms of not letting goals in. So I'm not too sure where that uh, faltering is. So it appears Mahler's dropping off a little bit from where he started, but it's 933 is still pretty good. Kevin Hatcher is back up to, or not Kevin Hatcher, <laughs> Kenny Hatcher is back up to a 941, which is nice. He was definitely a good pickup. So I would like to see a little bit more scoring out of our top guns in Cole Iacovo and maybe Richie. Uh, Keller would be nice as well if he, if he got going, but uh, not looking like it right now. So, hmm, let's check out the team stats, see if that tells us anything. Maybe we need to shake up the power play a little bit. Goals for per game. We are up there slightly. 2.57. So the goal scoring has dried up a little bit since the start of the season. Goals against per game. We're still way down there. 2.1. So that's good. Power play. Yeah. that. Uh, yeah. All right. The power play needs to change. 15.1. We are at 17% earlier. We are now last in our division for the power play with only 19 power play goals on the season so far. So that's kind of eh. But uh, the penalty kill is still... Getting it done, 87%. So that is good. So let's change up, let's, uh, change up the power play a little bit. Because obviously that uh, appears to be struggling right now. So uh, let's see. Let's see. What can we do here? Let's try Molson in the middle. And then maybe instead of Raquel... You know what? Wiseman needs to step up. We'll uh, we'll get him some power play time, see what he can do. Hannafin, he's getting points. Dowdy's getting points. McAvoy's getting points. And Brandstrom's getting points. So there's nothing else I can really do. Maybe maybe a little switcheroo here. Uh, there's no one I... Here's the thing. I don't want to break up that line, though, of Richie, McLeod, and Cole Iacobo. They've been really... just. They've been really nice this, the entire time they've been together, you know? 18 goals for Richie. Uh, yeah. I don't want to change anything there. I will put Molson here. I will put uh, Koliak with McLeod. I'll put um, Keller there. Then Hannafin Dowdy. Yep, that looks good. Penalty kill is doing fine. It's just the power play that needed to be changed up a little bit. So we'll see if that works. If all else fails, I can... Uh, no, I did not mean to... 
That was a glitch right there. <laughs> if I, as I was saying, if all else fails, I could always put Ovi on the on the point and see if he's still got it there on the left circle. But I don't know. I think I those changes will I think will work because Wiseman's been looking for his opportunity anyway to uh, break into this team, and he's still kind of been you know not producing the way he thought we would or the way we thought he would. So let's see how he does. Let's see how he does in this month leading up to the trade deadline on the power play. And uh, we're going to start out the month with a loss, but uh, we come back with a win. So, oh, 9-3 win. The power play, okay, the power play had to have gotten at least a couple goals in that game. 9-3 win. There is no way there's all our even strength goals. <laughs> and then a shootout loss right there. So, again, we're getting points. It's just we need to find, we need to find a consistency in winning because it appears we're going back and forth here yeah i mean loss win win loss win loss loss win loss win loss <sighs> so we start out really nicely like we barely got any losses at the start of the season then we're a streaky team where we go loss 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 and then win 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 but now we're win loss win loss win loss this team doesn't make any sense <laughs> it really doesn't <sighs> from from February we have let's see <laughs> let's just let's just see this for a second so starting with Nashville loss win win loss win shootout loss overtime loss shootout win loss win loss overtime win loss that is a little concerning I mean, we're still in a good spot, 34, 21, and 7. I wouldn't imagine that's any less than third right now. Yeah, we're good. But, but, the rest of the division, as I mentioned, is catching up to us. And if we're not careful, we could uh, very well be kicked out of the playoffs here if we go on too much of a slide. So, let's see what's going on here. Koliakovo producing at the pace he was before. So, I mean, I guess that's good. He's ha he hasn't slowed down any. Richie, 29 goals. That's good. Molson, really not doing what I expected he would from last season. He had 36 goals. So uh, he's really not getting her done there. Might have to change up to some of the strategies there a little bit. Because uh, we're really uh, starting to see the inconsistencies of this team. So Richie with 48 points. McLeod with 42. Molson with 36. Keller with 34, Branstrom with 33, McAvoy with 30, Raquel with 30, Doughty with 25, uh, Hannafin with 25, Doughty with 25, Couturier with 21, Wiseman with 20, Ovechkin with 15, Natushkin with 11, Vernarski with 11, McCowan with 8, Barahowski with 6, Plus with 5, let's see who is a minus, I saw a minus 7 there, who is that? As Ricard Raquel and then Molson and Nichushkin. So the second line appears to be letting him send goals once again. So, uh, yeah, might want to change the strategies there a little bit. Check the shots, see who's getting the most shots. McAvoy, of course, and then Raquel, or not Raquel, Richie. <laughs> and then Keller. I think I must have read Richie and then Keller, and then, I don't know, morphed the two and became Raquel. I don't know. Koli with 144. Molson with 115. Let's see the face-offs. Maybe we're struggling there. So Molson, he might be able to take some face-offs. Uh, McLeod, Couturier, they're doing well on face-offs. Raquel, not so much. Uh, and uh, McCarron, really not so much. So we, All right, so that might be what we want to change there. So Because it doesn't appear that we're getting too much possession time. Especially from those, uh, no, nope, not trade players. I wanted to edit lines. Especially, uh, what was I saying? Especially from those top nine players. Or bottom six, I should say. So maybe we get McCarron out of the middle. We move maybe Nachushkin or Ovechkin up to the third line. And then we get, I don't know, Couturier down to the fourth line just because he's a face-off taker. Just throwing ideas out there. Did it say Wiseman was... Doing well on face-offs. Does he even take face-offs? Let's see. Ah, uh, no. Okay, so... I believe Raquel was, like, at a 49 for face-offs. 
Yeah, I mean, that's all right. Uh, out of curiosity, how's Keller doing face up? He's not bad. You know what? I might try Keller at center because he's he hasn't been producing much on the wing anyway. I think maybe if we try him at center, that might be good. Get Raquel on the wing. Maybe... Here's the thing, though. I want Molson in the center as well. We'll get Molson over here. Maybe Couturier down to the fourth line. What about... And I, Branstrom... Yeah, no, there's no way Branstrom would be able to take face-offs there. Raquel's dropped down to an 83. What if I put him on the fourth line? Nah. Couldn't do that. We'll do Couturier in the fourth line, and then Raquel with Branstrom and Wiseman. And then I'll put maybe Ovechkin on the second line. Or, you know what, we'll do Wiseman on the second line. And then... Hmm. It's either going to be Nachushkin or Ovechkin. I'm going to say, off a hunch, Ovechkin. I want to see how he does there with Branstrom and Raquel. Now, I know, again, we're, we, we have a winning record. It's just, like, I'm worried about the little bit of uh, inconsistency that uh, this team has found and for some reason cannot get rid of. So we'll try that. And hopefully it works. <laughs> I really, uh, yeah, this has to work because this is honestly starting to get become a very tight race in the Pacific Division. 77 points is Calgary. We have 75, but Vegas and Edmonton both have 73, and then Anaheim was 69. It's actually a closer, it's a much closer race than I thought it would be at the start of the season. So, uh, yeah, I, those are the only changes I really want to make. Maybe we'll try to edit the strategies. You know what? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, no. The, uh, the the line changes, I think, will be enough. And if they're not, then we'll maybe edit those strategies towards the end of the season. But I think this was definitely the ro this is definitely the roster that'll get it done. Because we saw how good these guys were at the beginning of the season. right? They just haven't found consistency since then. It's been either... Loss, 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 win, 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 or win, loss, win, loss, win, loss. Like, we haven't found that same consistency that we had in October and November. So, let's go maybe three more weeks here and see what happens. LA twice, today and tomorrow. They are 28, 28, and 5. Let's see what happens here as the game continues to go. And there we go. Nice, solid two games there. All right, all right. There's no way these aren't the lines then. That's a really nice... I like that stretch of games there with LA twice and then New Jersey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. These are the Oh, yeah. Okay. I think I think they're back. I think the San Jose Sharks from the beginning of the year... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don't, don't want to jinx it. <laughs> Just based off that stretch from LA to Florida, really... Because we got points in that game. I think the old San Jose Sharks from the beginning of the year are back. But again, I don't want to completely jinx it. So let's take this up to April 1st. Speaking of jinxes. <laughs> uh, there you go. Two wins right there. All right. There's no way we're not in the playoffs now. There's no way. I think we're good. I think we're good. 44-24-9 should be very well good enough. I mean, we're, we've already beat Calgary, and they were first. Yes, that that should be very well good enough to make the playoffs. Again, unless we lose these last five games, which I don't see happening. Uh, we, we may as well leave the uh, stat checking until after the game against Nashville. So, yeah, there you go. Two to one win. Three to two shootout win. These are definitely the lines. I'm glad I made that line change. By one loss, fair enough. But uh, we answer back with a very nice win against St. Louis. So, uh, yeah, let's slow sim this last game for posterity. This is the last regular season game of the San Jose Sharks GM mode. Soak it in, boys. We have clinched the conference, but not the President's Trophy. That will go to the New Jersey Devils. So let's just make this let's make this last regular season game a good one, cause uh, <laughs> let's 
Let's let's just go into the playoffs on a good note here, San Jose. Okay. First beer. All right, not bad. I'll take it. Mettered for Nashville. Oh, Nashville. Yes, yes, yes. This is perfect. I didn't even realize till just now. <laughs> Nashville obviously was the team who kicked us out in the playoffs last year in the third round. This is the time to conquer those demons. And we may not even see Nashville in the playoffs this year. Who knows? I didn't even see their record. I think they, they I mean, chances are they're going to be in the playoffs again. But what are the chances of us facing them in the playoffs again, right? So I figure they eliminated us last year. And if we can get a good game here against the Nashville Predators, which is looking like it, Cole Yakovo scored on Grubauer, then what if, you know, just conquer those demons, boys. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Just get it done in the third period. Do not let me down, Mahler or uh, Montembeau, whoever's, or not Montembeau, geez. <laughs> uh, it appears Mahler is in that, and Hicketts, once again, the, the shark killer. <laughs> he absolutely killed us in the playoff series in year number nine, so it looks like we are going to an overtime. And what better way <laughs> to go into the playoffs than, of course, to go to overtime with Nashville. Let's just simulate quickly here. Shootout, and uh, we lose in a shootout. To Nashville, that is brutal. So we had to use Ovechkin in the shootout. I don't believe he's on the shootout. So that had to have gone farther than five skaters there. <laughs> but nonetheless, we get a point out of it. Uh, I would say that's going into the playoffs on a good note. We could, we still couldn't beat Nashville, which was very unfortunate. But uh, at least we took them to overtime. So we showed them that we improved. If you guys remember, none of the games last year in the playoffs were even close. I, mean, I think it was 4-2, 5-2, 5-2, 5-2. 5 they swept us. So, Cole Yakubo with 75 points to finish off the last regular season of the San Jose Sharks GM by 29 goals. I believe that is tied for a career high. Yes, it is. So, uh, he definitely showed up this year on the score sheet. And uh, only 19 power play points. So, a lot of his points last year came for the power play. 31 power play points? Jesus! <laughs> All right, yeah, he definitely, so they were definitely, the first line was definitely going five on five wise. And then Nick Ritchie with 38 goals. Is that a career high for him or at least tied? No, right, right, right. Last year he had the 41 goal season, but uh, that is still nonetheless a very good season for Nick Ritchie. 69 points for him. Darren McLeod with 58. And uh, Sheldon Molson with 48 points. He didn't exactly get the goals like he thought he, like I thought he would, but uh, you know he at least contributed in a reasonable uh, effort. 48 points. And then uh, Keller, not quite worth again, not quite worth the 9.1. But again, he is an important part of this team, at least for the playoff run. <laughs> if I were the G next GM, I would trade Cl Keller just to clear up some salary cap, especially with McLeod's salary coming up but uh, pretty good effort besides the salary for Clayton Keller 23 goals and 24 assists Brandstrom on the third line now this was a very interesting experiment and I liked it I really did uh, 11 goals and 33 assists I mean I cannot complain that's more scoring than you'll see out of the majority of third liners in this game so that's really good I, I, I would have to say and uh, Ricard Raquel with 40. I mean, he had more points than Ricard Raquel. So, uh, obviously, that's the offensive awareness, 92, at work there. But uh, I really liked trying out a defenseman at forward. I, I think for the first time in a while. I don't remember the last time I did that, actually. And I don't remember the last time I put a defenseman on the penalty kill as a forward. <laughs> so, uh, but I think, it, I believe it just worked with McAvoy and Branstrom there just because they could both play offense. And obviously, Brandstrom is specifically offense, but, uh, you know, McAvoy can play defense as well. And speaking of McAvoy, 38 points for him. It's a plus 17, so he is Mr. Everything there. Uh, Noah Hannafin with 33. Doughty with 28. Wiseman with 27. How many power play goals did he have out of curiosity? Only one power play point, so that is unfortunate there. Uh, Sean Couturier with 25. Ovechkin with 13 goals, so that's pretty good. Finish the season strong. I believe he had seven last time we checked. So moving up to the third line with especially with Brandstrom definitely helped. 
Uh, Vernarski with 15, Nachushkin with 12, McCarron with 9, Barahowski with 7, and Plus with 6. Let's check out the plus minus. McLeod with a plus 33, Cole plus 29. The first line absolutely killed it this year, as usual. And then uh, let's see, McCarron, Raquel, and Nachushkin, and Branstrom were minuses. So again, that's an odd combination of players. Two fourth liners. I believe Raquel's on the second line still. Maybe the third line. Yeah, no, I moved him down on the under the third line because we moved what's his face. Um, what's his name? What is his name? <laughs> I forgot his name. Molson, right? Um, we put Molson on the second line center, and Couturier is obviously on the fourth line. So, pretty good season all around, I would say. We obviously had our ups and downs, but Mahler with a nine thirty two save percentage. Hatcher with a 936. I cannot complain at all. That's a very strong effort by Hatcher and Mahler. Hopefully Mahler can retain his form from what he did in the playoffs last year. I mean, he was absolutely ridiculous. 931. We all know that dropped off from Nashville. He was originally a 947. So if he can continue playing like the way he has over the past playoff, last playoffs and the past couple of regular seasons, I think we'll be just fine in goal. Okay, so let's check out the team stats to end off the season. The, once again, the final regular season for the San Jose Sharks. Let me know what team you guys want to see next. I do have something planned. I do have a uh, particular expansion team in the works. And I won't say what it is yet, but I'm very excited for it. 2.66 goals for per game. Very nice. And goals against per game. We kept that down there at 2.12 for the majority, if not all year. Very nice. Power play is looking a little better than it did before. 17.9. It was down at 15.1 before, so it definitely improved. Penalty kill. So penalty kill didn't really hurt too much over the course of the season. We started out at a 90, then we dropped down to an 87. Now we're at 86.3, so I really can't complain uh, a total of 32 shorthanded goals against, so can't complain. And we had five shorthanded goals for, but it looks like uh, the rest of the league kind of caught up to us there in terms of shorthanded goals for. So that'll be it for the year number nine, or number 10, I should say, <laughs> regular season. And uh, it would appear... That we are going up in the playoffs against the Edmonton Oilers. Great. Just what we needed. Just what we freaking needed. We, we Of course, it's got to be the Edmonton Oilers, isn't it? It's going to be the Edmonton Oilers. I know it. Because Anaheim's probably going to get Nashville. Oh, Nashville. Great. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Is it the Edmonton Oilers? Oh, it's the Anaheim Ducks. Okay. So, ooh, okay. Nice, nice, nice. So, Here's the good news, is that Nashville and Edmonton have each other. The two demons to the San Jose Sharks over the past few years are facing each other, which means we won't have to deal with one of them. And potentially we won't have to deal with any of them if uh, Nashville gets knocked out by either Colorado or Minnesota in the th second round, assuming Nashville or Edmonton, you know, you guys know what I mean. <laughs> if one of those central division teams like Colorado or Minnesota can take those guys out, we will uh, not have anything to worry about in terms of uh, past history. So that'll be about it for now. And we have a big, big playoff run coming up. And it's going to start with the Anaheim Ducks. And I will see you guys in the next one when we start the year number 10 playoffs. See you guys then.